Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to take a look at models and representations for integers. Before we can do that though, let's try to answer the question, what are the integers? Well, previously we have studied the set of numbers called the whole numbers. We'll remember that that is 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. All of our positive counting numbers, including 0. Well, to form the integers, we want to recognize that each positive whole number has an opposite. By opposite, we mean negative. So the opposite of 1 is negative 1. And we show negative by taking this little minus sign, almost looking like it's up in like an exponent position. 2 would have the opposite, negative 2, and so on. Every positive counting number in the whole numbers has an opposite. Well, if we take the set of all the positive counting numbers, all the negative counting numbers, and zero, that makes the set of integers. So we have way down to negative, as big as you can think, all the way up through negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one, then we hit zero, and then one, two, three, four, and so on. So that is our set of integers. Now starting to look at some of our models for the integers. The first model is our number line model. This model has us focusing on the center of our number line being at zero and recognizing that positive numbers move to the right and negative numbers move towards the left. Let's model the number three. Starting by finding 0, since this is a positive 3, we're going to model 3 in the positive or right-hand direction. So there is our model for 3. What about negative 2? Again, finding 0, since this is a negative value, we're going to go 2 units from 0 to the left. So here is negative 2. How about negative 4? Finding zero, we're going to go four units in the left or negative direction. So there is our number line model for negative four. And finally, how about one? Well, it's a positive value. Find zero, we're going to go one unit in the positive or right direction. Another model that we can use to show integers is what we call the chip model. This model uses double-sided chips. Usually they're different colors. Oftentimes we'll see yellow and red, but they can really be any colors. And one side will have a plus sign, the other side will have a minus sign. Obviously the one with a plus is going to represent a positive one, and the one with a minus is going to represent a negative one. What's important to note is that if we were to combine those two together, they add to zero. What we want to use here is the idea that a positive and negative opposite, so a positive one and a negative one, bring us back to zero or add to give zero. So we can model the number negative one using chips in several different ways. The most basic way is to just put one negative chip. But another way would be to have two positive chips and three negative chips. Here, we recognize that if we pair a positive and a negative chip, those zero out. So when we zero those out, and you can actually have students either stack them or remove them, then what we're left with is one red or negative chip. Here's another same idea here. Modeling negative one, we can do so with two negatives and one positive. If we stack or remove one pair of opposites, we have one negative chip left over. One thing that's very important to learn about when we're talking about integers is the concept of absolute value. The absolute value of an integer is its distance from zero. So we've talked about integers having both a distance and a direction from zero, but when we talk about the absolute value, we're isolating just the distance. 
We use two vertical lines around an integer as shown here to denote absolute value. So when we see this notation, we know that that means the distance of a, which can be any integer, from zero. Let's see that modeled. If we want to find the absolute value of three, we can count the distance from the number zero to the number three. One, two, three. So the absolute value of three is three. Now, if we look at the absolute value of negative three, we're again counting the distance from 0 to negative 3. So that is 1, 2, 3. So the absolute value of negative 3 is also 3, because both are the same distance from 0, one in the right direction and the other in the left. All right, let's see if we can get this absolute value of negative 5 modeled. So we're going to start at 0 and we're going to count how many units from 0 to negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that would mean that the absolute value of negative 5 is 5. Alright guys, that does it for this video on integer models and representations. To see more about the integers and what we can do with them, keep on watching.